All right, so thanks for joining Heavy Rocks the Boat 2023. We're here on the final day, and what better way for us to wrap up our onboard interviews than speaking with chocolate starfish frontman Adam Thompson. So, Adam, thanks for joining us. Absolute pleasure, guys. Thanks. Thank you. So, you performed two special showcase gigs earlier on in the cruise. So, how were they? Look, I thought they were fantastic. This is probably our, well, I think it's our third one as Chocolate Starfish, and last year I did uh, my own show with the Bohemian Rhapsody soundtrack. And look, it's something special about this cruise that is unlike anything on dry land. It's, um, you know, to say it's a captive audience is probably an understatement, but uh, there's just an energy and a flow that comes together uh, and an expectation from both the artist and the audience, yeah. and when that sort of meets in a in a perfect world, um, magic happens. It does, yeah. Well, we caught the very first show. I think we we're part of the Red Card Gang, and it was a highly entertaining show, bro. Like, where do you get the energy from? You've been uh, doing you've been doing this for a long time now, and you're still yeah. like you're on your on your young kid pills. Well, look, um, next year is the 30th anniversary of the band, yeah. so we're um, we're doing national tour next year as well, called the Best of Everything, and it's. It's obviously all our albums from Starfish, but it's also the classic albums that we've uh, we've done, which is the Battle of Hell, the the Bohemian Rhapsody that I did in, in Excess as Kick. So it's um it really is a best of uh, live show. We'll be supporting ourselves as well. So we're not oh, of course. <laughs> which is well because we get to the end of a set uh, and people say, oh man, I would have loved another hour of that. And so we're gonna acoustically uh, do forty five minutes and then after the break do an hour and a half of full rock so wow. um, you have to find even more energy well but that's alright you know I don't know it's just it, for me it's it's something that I you know work I do a lot of Bikram yoga and uh, it's not a, not a shameless plug by the way I'm not getting <laughs> I'm not getting told to say this <laughs> write that down write program. that down bikramyoga.com.au <laughs> um, but I don't know just you know I I sort of made a decision um, when I was pretty young in life to get the most out of my body and the most out of my uh, talents and gifts and that's why I, you know, I try not to abuse them. Yeah, right. and Look, I guess it's a good way to save money on the support bands too, right? Uh, <laughs> it is a good way. It is a good way. <laughs> why is it when the word abuse came up that he jumped in? I don't I know. know. I was trying to hear it was a comedy release. And yeah, you opened this show with two meatloaf songs which led me to believe that you were doing the meatloaf thing on board, but it ended up just being a cross-section of, of everything. Yeah, well, we, we've just finished um, nationally touring the Battle of Hell album, and that was our uh, the first of the classic albums that we did. That was my go-to album as a kid. Yeah, um, me too. I just loved it, and uh, I tell a story where um, I lost my mum at the same year to cancer that that album came out. Mm. So. I was 14 and a half, and it was everything that I wanted to articulate as a young boy, but young country boy didn't have the skills or the uh, experience to know how to, um, you know, to manage grief or to manage um, relationships, you know, puberty and all that sort of stuff that's going on. But uh, Better to Hell kind of helped with that. It helped save me and put me on a path. You know, things like Heaven Can Wait and God, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. I mean, he you know. Like that. It, for me, it was more like Paradise by the BMX light, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that just completely wiped out my first question. Well, <laughs> come on, let's... <laughs> let's, let's, no, let's, let's, let's give that one. Oh, well, let's go to number two. Let's... Well, uh, we'll he's only got two. So, we're, we're still on the meat life, life stuff, right? So, um, with all the tempos and key changes, mm -hmm. from basically the master of tempo and key changes, meat life, Yeah. Um, how do you guys cope with that on stage? Like, how do you get it together that tight to be able to pull off those big changes? Yeah, look, it's interesting, um, particularly with um, the epic songs like like Battle to Hell, like um, the last track on the album, Crying Out Loud. Mm -hmm. The melody and the lyrics, um, they, they change, and the bar, like I say, the bar lengths change, and um, if you come in or you forget one line, it's almost like, um, you know, chronologically you've got to follow the, the graph and if you forget a line it's really difficult to pick it up again because um, you know you, you could be in the wrong spot like you can't you can't interchange them like a normal uh, pop song where you just yeah. cookie cutter verse one to verse two you know it doesn't work that way so we've had to really absorb these songs into our DNA for me it was a little easier because it was 
like I said before, it was something that I, I grew up with, and, and it's it's part of of who I am. But for some of the other guys in the band, it was probably an even greater challenge. So mm. you've got to ingest the whole thing as a, as a piece, yep. um, and not uh, and not think of it in in little slabs. And you've got to think of it as a as a linear graph, you know. Yeah. I, I actually it. forgot about how long the full version of Banner to Hell was. Basically what he's saying is he was bored with the yeah. show. No, no, no. <laughs> but, halfway through, but halfway through track one, he goes, no. when's this crap going to end? Yeah, I, 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 thought, I, I thought we leave. were three songs in, and then I'm like, oh, hang on, I'm still in Banner to Hell, because better there better was a though, shorter yeah. version of it. And I was only like, so I'm only 43. So when that yeah, came yeah, out, yeah, it was yeah, on the road. Yeah, I know I do look old. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I only really ever knew the version that I'd see on Rage at the yeah, time, yeah, which right. is the shortened down version. Yes. And yeah. I should, yeah, it, you were, I thought you were three songs in. I'm like, I don't know what that song, the last song was, and then you're back yeah. in. I'm like, okay, all right. But you, Wake and, up, Jimmy. But you and people that younger than you, Jim, it's what has been. It's been great for us uh, doing these classic albums like that and Bohemian Rhapsody, because. Uh, there's been a real change in our um, in our audience shape. So it's not just older people of our demo. Now a lot of younger people who are experiencing that type of music, like like the Battle Hell album, like like Queen's material that's long and involved, and you know a lot of kids who are used to just homogenised short songs are hearing these epics and going man, there's something special about that that I'm just, my ears prick up to. So our audience now really ranges from, you know, 14 to, like I thought, yeah, 14, 14, <laughs> oh, 73 in some respects. But yeah, like it's amazing. We, you know, I thought these young 14 year olds at our concert recently, there were six of them. And I thought they were, um, you know, taking the piss. That, but they, they absolutely love it. They say, no, we follow you all the time. Oh, wow. That's a good feeling. That's great. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I'm up to. So, like the tempo changes throughout the songs, you set on board at some changes between like the meatloaf stuff, chocolate starfish, and you shifted a, a Queen song as well. How do you select the set each night to mm. keep keep it flowing the way you do? Because it's it's pretty much high energy all the way through. It doesn't settle down. No, it doesn't. Even a ballad for us is is high energy. Um, yeah, look, I don't know. How, we. we we road test things, of course, and we, we, we do swap and change. Sometimes there's accidental mistakes where, you know, the keyboard player will play a song in a spot and he's misread the... Uh, love you, Norm, but... You know. <laughs> Stop <laughs> fucking up. <laughs> You're as fallible as the rest of us. Um, but just, that happened just the other night and he played one on, actually on your show. That wasn't meant to be in that order. Right. But it was just right. It just... It happened. Oh, we didn't no, you didn't notice. It, well, that's right. You didn't notice because you didn't know what was going to be. Um, and sometimes, you know, I, look, I, I sometimes read a crowd, and if I think they need something in this particular spot, I'll literally just call it on the spot. And it could be something the boys haven't played for a few months, but they've kind of got to have a few in their bank. Yeah, you've got to be ready. Uh, you've got to be ready because, yeah. like, if, if I feel, geez, they, they want another Chocolate Starfish song here and not one of the classic album songs, I'll just, I'll yeah. pull it, you know? And it is, a lot of that goes on feel, you're right. Like, it's gotta, you gotta be, be able feel. to feel and read the audience. Yeah, and just just understand the emotion that's happening in the room and, you know, do they want to dance right now? Have they had enough jumping up and down, you know, etc. cetera. So um, that's, you know, I hope one of my gifts I, I mentioned earlier is, is being able to read a room and kind of know what it needs at that moment. Now, the Rock the Boat cruise has definitely lived up to its title this year in more ways than one. Like, it's been all over the shop. Like, and we saw you on stage just a few times. You, were, you had this sway out, mate. Like, how hard is it to keep up? Oh, man, there? it really is, actually. Um, I think the very first cruise we did, um, I went to sing a line and the microphone went back. <laughs> oh, uh, hence these new veneers that I have right now. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, You've got to, your core strength, you know, talking about how do I keep fit and stuff before, your core strength's really important. What was that yoga again? Bikramyoga.com.au. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> it's the one in the heat, so it's 40 degrees. Anyway, another story, another interview. Uh, but it's important to um, not be too stiff-legged and actually have a little little bend in your knee. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's probably like surfing, I would imagine, or... Or snowboarding, you know, we've, we've got to have that little bounce and that little 
ability to, to go with the flow. We've just been trying to get drunk and level it out, but it hasn't worked. <laughs> <laughs> We've been bouncing off walls and said it's quite the opposite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but it, look, it, it's, 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 it's something that, you know, you're not going to get on, on dry land, but it's, it's kind of cool. I mean, you know, for all those people who are thinking about booking for this cruise, I would say absolutely book it. And this is not a, not a sale point either, but um, I wasn't sure about coming on the first cruise. I thought, oh, is it going to be... You know, are you going to be annoyed by the guests or are you going to be just seasick or, you know, all the things that run through your negative brain and it was none of the above. Um, it was all, it's been, a, it's been a wonderful experience and just one that I want to come back to all the time. Well, speaking of that, like, it seems every year I've seen a Rock the Boat poster, Chocolate Starfish been on it. Like, mm. when was your first year? Oh, I would say probably 17 or 18. I because it's, I always find pre-COVID, post-COVID, you still yeah, lose those couple of years. It, yeah. And so I can't remember if it was five years ago or seven, or, but I would say it's about 2017. Uh, we did our very first one. And it's, again, it's funny how um, moments change. We were booked to come on and we had, he didn't really know much about Chocolate Starfish, the promoter. And um, so he had us kind of as one of the bar bands out by the oh, pool. Right. And um, it was the same year that somebody else was due to play in the theater, but he got drunk in an Adelaide nightclub and so he, couldn't come on the cruise, so I won't mention names. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so last minute, we got thrown in the theatre, or we haven't left. Yeah, so, I couldn't imagine you having the same effect on one of the smaller stages. Like, no, well, you, it wouldn't. You need a big theatre and a big, a big stage. Yeah, and it was just one of those fortuitous moments that somebody else couldn't get on the boat, and we uh, we got shifted into the theatre. And even since, I think that might have even been a day one performance or a day two performance now we're sort of third last in one of the and it's great premium you have to play the spots. two shows now instead of five because absolutely and you only got to play the two yeah. yeah but they're more they're definitely more concert events now oh, they are, yeah. and, and what it's done it's shaped so many other things we do with chocolate starfish so now uh we do theaters we do theaters yeah. all around the country as part of our shows um we've we've migrated from that pub band into a into a theatre band that's still dynamic and energetic, and but people still jump up and sing and dance. I know you made us stand down the other night. We had the shits with you. Yeah, like, we're just enjoying <laughs> sitting down for a bit. And you're like, everyone stand up. We're going, fuck off, well, Adam. I was, <laughs> I was looking at Jimmy because he's going, oh bloody hell. <laughs> and here we go. Yeah, here we go again. <laughs> Oh, Jimmy, over to you. Over to me. Right. <laughs> Have you had a chance to check out the other artists on board this year, and who stands out to you? Uh, so we only bought it halfway in New Mia, so we didn't do the full cruise this year because we had another concert to do uh, in New South Wales. So um, I went, we went and saw John Stephen. John, John, and his band are great. Um, I do know that. He Jack, didn't want to talk to us for some reason. Really? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I just told him. <laughs> I, I said, "Watch out for the Jimmy Garrett." He's a bit of hard work. Yeah, you've had a reputation, Jim. Yeah. I, I think everyone's busy getting ready for this whole Barnsley thing. So I think so. Are you kind of really left it um, I'm not sure yet. No, I'm not not sure. It's uh, you know. See what happens. You're being very coy. You know, you know exactly what's happening. Uh, <laughs> I'm a very coy kind of man. Mate. I'm a I get shy that. and demure. Um, uh, look, I, I understand that Joe and the boys, Joe Camilleri, really did a great show the other night. Um, I what did I see? Um, I saw. Uh, my wife told me that the Haxon Haxon girls they are fantastic. Are fantastic. Yeah. And really nice girls too. Yeah, and really really great girls. Um, yeah, look, I, only because we we haven't had a much of a chance, but recent, like last year's Rock the Bar, I went and saw so many great, great bands. And um, yeah, there's, there is always something happening that to, for every for every taste bud, you know, yeah. That yeah. in every different thing. So yes, there's the headliners like us in the theatres, but you go around to those small bars and you're gonna find little bits of magic. Uh, I think almost every artist I've seen on board is just world class. Yeah. And it comes down to everyone's such good performers. Um, and on that, what about the rest of the guys in the band? Do you want to give them a bit of a shout out? Who, who have you got? <laughs> the rest of the guys in my band? Yeah. Well, we've got Norm, our piano player, who I mentioned before, who, you know, a little blind, can't half see the set list every every once in a while. He's, he's so sometimes, one gets, yeah, he gets one, He's got one strike against him already. <laughs> exactly, he's got one strike. Um, <laughs> there's uh, Johnny Nixon, our uh, bass player, that's sort of big rig with the tattoos. Yep. Um, yeah, a unit. Big unit. You notice him and the Mohawk guy. And the Mohawk guy. That's little. So there's big rig and little rig. <laughs> right. Yeah. So there's little, little rigs with the Mohawk on the guitar, uh, and our drummer, our our, uh, our uh, timekeeper Darren on the uh, drums. He's um, he calls himself the uh, the caveman drummer because it's very meat and potatoes and 
you know, not a lot of finesse, as he would say himself, but he'll keep the time. What drummer does have finesse, really? Oh, there's a lot of those. <laughs> you know, but, uh, that's is that, a nice word for that. that that's not him. Uh, yeah, no, he, we got no time for jazz drummers. No, no, no. <laughs> Daz keeps the beat and keeps it beautifully. Yeah. So you mentioned before that next year sees Chocolate Starfish celebrate 30 years as a band on the boat, which is a phenomenal effort, mate. Like, what are some of your best memories over three decades of being in band? Um, yeah, it's a great question. Um, you should have done more research like him. Mate. <laughs> Get better questions. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's a comedy relief. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I'm not uh, good at it. <laughs> so for me, um, I think it's been the evolution of the band. I mean, obviously in those, in those early days of the 90s, when we, when we put it together, putting uh, Your So Vain out as a, as a cover was a, a great, uh, great career move. Ultimately, we, we thought it was only going to be a, a toe in the water and that was going to open up for Mountain and Four Little Word and all the other songs. But it went so high that um, we were more than just on the, um, on, the, on the radars. We were, we were a top ten band at that point. And so there was that initial touring, but back in those days too, I think you know we were we were younger, and we we sort of we were living that lifestyle of of what you thought a rock and roll star should be. So it's almost like a you've got this image in your brain about how you should act, how you should speak, and a lot of it's not as authentic as what it is now. Like to you know just to see and hear a show now, thirty years later the raves and the confidence uh, to be truly authentic can come through in the, in the, the raves in between the songs and, and the approach that we, that we do. Um, so I think the evolution, we've, you know, we lost Zoran, our guitar, guitar player, who was my co-writer, we lost him just over a decade ago to cancer, and, that, and then uh, Zach stepped into that, um, into that breach. But, um, you know, Zach brings a, a different character than you know, Zoran would have been a lot more like if you saw um, Tim Henwood from uh, John Stevens' band, the blonde guy. He yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's now my co-writer for okay. most most songs. So, um, I th- you know, I think that evolution now is being one that's resonating with the band, with the, with the band, but also with the fans. If I look at that now objectively, we are bigger now than we were back in the nineties. Even though we don't get radio airplay anymore, yeah. we're definitely bigger and more popular. Because it's, strange, yeah. it's true, yeah. we're, we're, people see us and they go, "That's something that I can connect with, and that's something I'm, that I think is real." Um, and man, we have so many fans that would—they'll literally come to out of that 30 date um, to the next year, they'll come to 20 out of 30 yeah, shows, right. that's phenomenal. which is phenomenal. Mm. Yeah. So you know, I think it's the evolution, and that's my greatest memories, and and how we've transitioned as a band to where we are now. So what, what would you say you've learned about yourself and about performing in that 30 years? Um, well, another great question. Um, it's two. <laughs> two, <laughs> zero. I'll just leave now. Uh, <laughs> I'll throw myself out. He's done. <laughs> um, what have I learned? Look, I, I think one of the greatest things is to trust, like even, you know, the flamboyancy of which I, I come across now is is very natural, but it, I felt that way back in the 90s, but almost didn't have the confidence and have the, um, the authenticity to pull it off. And uh, I think, you know, now being the front man that I am as a performer, the band backs me in it, but also all the other bands who perhaps back in the day, like I, the Angels boys, like the Brewster Brothers, right? Um, you know, they're always in their black t-shirts yeah. and their, you know, that classic rock look. And I come out and the bling and the feathers and the whole stuff. And they, and I remember the other day I said, oh, sorry guys, you know, here's just me doing my thing. And, and, and John and Brewster goes, don't you ever change. You <laughs> stay like that, that's you. Awesome. And it's that's almost awesome. like, uh, you know, finally, 30 years later, everyone accepts, oh, that's, that's chocolate stuff. Yeah. But, and we've always stood alone, you know, we've, ne- we've never uh, towed the party line. and. For, that that's a longer path, but in the end, it's a it's a stronger. More path. rewarding too. Yeah, it? much more yeah. rewarding. 
The golden black tassels were a nice touch. Yeah. That, that one Especially over. against <laughs> everyone else being in white. Like, the contrast yeah. is like the, the good versus evil. Yeah. No, look, I made, a, I made a decision halfway through this interview, Jimmy, that um, I'm going to redo my will. <laughs> and those tassels are going to be left to you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Right. That's, that's my, that's my, that'll be my future stage get That will be your future stage get out. And uh, so I'm going to leave those to you, all right? Sorry, that's awesome. You'd look great in a band called Azrael, so that, that would look perfect on, <laughs> on stage. The boys are going to be shocked. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. but, but at least John Bruce is going to go, don't you ever change? Yeah, yeah, don't yeah, you yeah. ever <laughs> change? <laughs> the cameraman's loving this. He's pissing himself back there. He's allowed to. You've got to be crying over here. I hope it doesn't, hope it doesn't zoom in on me. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we at? We're back over to... No, you can say, some, say stay quiet for a bit, actually. All right, yeah. The press release for the boat mentioned new material for Chocolate Selfie Shoe. Have you got some coming up? Yes, we have. Um, so that's that's where it's interesting too like I the fact that you don't know that we did two songs off the new brand new album no, didn't the other night. You're right. There so you we've now got to a point where we're able to do new songs but deliver them in such a way that you don't really even know that they're new songs. Yeah, they're which is true because normally it stands out like dog spores with the band. You're exactly like, right. The whole momentum just goes because no one knows the songs. Yeah, yeah, yes. We worked him in the set list well. We worked him in. Oh, Jimmy but, noticed. Jimmy did notice. He did notice, did I have to check my notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, the notes could be lying right now. Um, but I think, I think that's a positive that we, you know, we can deliver a new song now without being apologetic. I think that's, you know, that's the worst thing you can do as a new band is, um, you know, look at it as a, a toilet song or a, you know, a floor, floor clearer. You, yeah. have to, um, you have to believe in the song, but you've also got to deliver it in a way that um, people connect, can connect with it. Um, but we are definitely uh, doing a brand new album, um, halfway through writing at the moment, got some great new ideas. The last one was 2020, which we wrote during COVID. Um, and that was great, the Beautiful Addiction album. So Beautiful Addiction was track three where I started with, hey, hey, yeah. And uh, the, um, you know, the, 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 that album was great because it was the first one that we were able to spend time on since the 90s. Yeah, right, Because uh, yeah. you had that time. But yeah, we're, we're right in the middle of uh, the new one at the moment. Um, let's see uh, if we can get it out in, uh, in time for the boat next year. Nice. Well, speaking of the boat next year, you're doing your 30th anniversary. We'll close up with this one, but anything special on that? Like you, like knowing you, you're gonna have something flamboyant and extravagant for it. Like, what, what do you got planned? Um, you're not gonna have your costume. Remember, Jimmy's got that. Well, that's right. Jimmy's got the costume. <laughs> so you're gonna have to come up right. with something there. Maybe get Jimmy up to, on stage in the costume. Well, that's that's we'll be here. I, I just I just could get you up, actually. We'll be here. So. Maybe it could be like Napoleon Dynamite. You could just come out and do a random dance, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is getting better by the moment. Oh, the top. <laughs> See, this is the way my brain works, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, if I told you what we're going to do we'll next... We'll be on here next year doing interviews. You so, will be. So we'll make sure he's rehearsed something. Well, I'm going to I'm going to make you wear them on the next interview <laughs> and uh, you can sit in this spot I'll, but I'll add, ask some questions that so will be way better song. than that shit that you've asked today right? <laughs> you've got a lot of work to do Jim, between now and then um, I'm not going to tell you all the things we're doing next year because I want you to turn up I want it to be a surprise and believe me you'll always be surprised when you chocolate staff this show and if people can't make it on the boat where can they find out information to see your other shows got yeah just go to chocolatestarfish.com.au the whole uh, best of everything 30th anniversary tour is on starts june uh the 20th and goes through till september all around australia fantastic well we'll definitely come to the brisbane show that as well but in the meantime thank see you for the time, all right it's been fun see you thank you <laughs> 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 that's gonna get back that was a good